Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. The other day I was scrolling on Twitter, as I do for too many hours every day, when I stumbled upon a quote retweet from an account called The Art of Purpose, and it made me like audibly roll my eyes. Like, you know what I mean, right? Like I just like had a physical audible reaction to this tweet and it made me need to go look at more of these tweets. I needed to go on a deep dive into this account and I needed to make a video about it. I think that I might have done one before in the past sometime last year, but that was a while ago. They've tweeted a bunch more stuff. I have a bunch more thoughts and things to say. So here we are diving into the art of purpose. But before we get into it, I would like to say a massive thank you to today's patron of the day, Black Cat. I appreciate you and your support so much and I hope that you enjoy this video. If anyone else would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash sevicat. It starts at as little as one pound a month and I appreciate it. I also wanted to let you know that for this video, I am partnering with Geology and I will tell you a little bit more about them in a little bit. Let's get into the art of purpose. Starting with the tweet that I saw that prompted me to make this video, which is this one. They captioned it with, what changed? And it's like four images that say, once upon a time, a family could own a home, a car, and send their kids to college, all on one income. And then what changed? And I just love when these people who are conservative, who are capitalistic, who are like against socialism and communism and anything like that, complain about capitalism. They're like, what changed? What happened? It's like, um, well, although capitalism was a thing then, obviously, it's gotten a little bit out of hand. It's got, it's got a little bit outrageous uh, because you know, with the evolving of technology and the development of everything and the speed at which everything moves, uh, capitalism has dug its little hands into everyone. Greed is unreal um, and wealth is so far separated. It is impossible to live and capitalism is the cause, it is It is the problem. And I just find it so funny that these people are always like, it's so unfair that we can't live on one income anymore. And then also they hate the left and say that the left are ruining everything and we are the problem with the economy. Even though we are the ones who would like to live in a society where you can live comfortably off of one income, you should be able to live in general without having to work. You know, like that, that's our whole thing. Our whole thing is that I think on one income, you should be able to buy like a two bedroom house and you should be able to eat and still also like do things that you enjoy. You should be able to do that on one income. And that's, that's the left's way of thinking. And these capitalists are in here being like, yeah, but fuck the left though. We like capitalism. I like capitalism. And why can't we do this anymore? <sighs> the call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> This is sort of the basis of this account. He is a traditionalist, I believe is what he describes himself as, which I find really, really funny for a whole bunch of reasons. But the funniest thing I find about his entire thing is that he has 310,000 followers and all of his tweets get roughly like maybe 500 likes. Occasionally there'll be a couple that like blow up and get a lot of attention. But usually it's like between 300 and 500 likes. And a lot of them are about like masculinity and how men should be hard workers and they should work to provide for their wives and their family. And that's like his whole thing. That's his whole shtick. But in his bio and like one of his biggest things is that he runs a course for $50 a month, sorry, for $49 a month where you can learn how to make six figures off of being a Twitter influencer. He's like, with my guide, you can get access to 800 hours of web seminars on how to make over a hundred thousand dollars by working 15 minutes a day on Twitter. That That's his thing. That's, that's what he claims. So he gets 500 likes per tweet and claims to be making six figures a year off of that. And that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. And it goes so against this whole traditionalism thing. Like so, so against this traditionalism thing. He talks about how bad social media is and how we should go back to our roots and like, why isn't it like the 1950s? But also don't work hard 
Spend 15 minutes a day on social media every day and then you too can be rich. Like, which one is it, bro? I think he does it with like a bunch of other influencers on Twitter, like him and a few other people come together and they're like, yeah, we're gonna teach you how to make money. It's called Masterclass 24 seven. Masterclass 24 seven is a mastermind community where accounts that have over 100,000 followers and make six figures online share their best kept secrets and playbooks with the members. And it's so funny because like, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? How does this help anyone? Because I am able to see your tweets. I know what you're tweeting. I, I can see that. And considering most of your tweets get under 500 likes, why would I take advice from you in the first place? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna tell people to tweet? All of this money is being earned off of scamming people on this course. That's what's so funny to me about these courses is that these people who are rich are always like, Join my course and I'll teach you how to be rich too. But the way they get rich is through people taking their courses. Like they're millionaires because a bunch of idiots pay them hundreds of dollars to learn how to be millionaires. And it's just such this ridiculous cycle. And I can't believe that people actually fall for it or actually do it. Like, how are you looking at this Twitter account and being like, yeah, I'm gonna give this guy money to teach me how to be rich. So yeah, um, hypocritical, uh, hilarious and has way too big of an ego. Like thinks they're way more important than they actually are. Anyway, let's have a look through more of their tweets and see more of what their traditional life entails and what they want for the world and some things they complain about because they have, they have a lot of complaints. So here we have a side by side that says, find yourself a wife who dreams of this and it's PewDiePie and Marzia holding the like image of their ultrasound not this, and it's Taylor Swift on stage. And I'm just baffled by this one. <laughs> the choice to use PewDiePie and Matsya is quite hilarious to me. Like that's so funny. That's such an odd choice because isn't she also an influencer? She still has a career and has fans and an audience, right? That is a thing. So really the only difference here is that she is currently married and pregnant and she isn't the like biggest earner. She's not the most successful person in the relationship. Whereas Taylor Swift is a self-made billionaire, as self-made as a billionaire can be. And Really, no matter who she's in a relationship with, she is going to be like the sole earner and the most successful person in that relationship. And she isn't presently married and with child, but she is like a cis het white Christian woman from like the Southern states of the US. So I find it so funny that this is the example you're using. <laughs> like this is just you being afraid of women who have more influence than their partners. That's that's really it here. That's This is just showing insecurity. Just weird, weird comparison, weird goals to have, weird thing to say in general, because you can be both. This next one says, what happened to men, 1924? And it's Killian Murphy, who is, is not from 1924. This was taken like last year, wearing like a suit with like a little hat. And then 2024, and it's a man wearing like, a sparkly jacket and trousers and like a black shirt. And really confused as to this example too, because like usually when they show examples like this, they use like Harry Styles in a dress, which is still a silly point, but like it, it makes a little bit more sense to me than this, because like this to me is still like, he's still wearing like pants and a jacket. They're just sparkly. <laughs> Like, I don't quite understand here what the problem is. There's no problem with a dress or anything either, but it's just fascinating to me. The choices that this person is making for their images, it's fascinating. I am obsessed with the fact that whenever these points are made and they're like, what happened to masculine men? What happened to men? And they exclusively use like fashion from a period that only lasted like 30 years. <laughs> you don't go anytime before that or after that. It's specifically like Western fashion in the early 1900s and that's it. They don't go any further before that. They don't go anywhere after like that specific era. They're like, that was all of human history before last year. All of human history, men wore suits and ties. That's just how they existed. And now they wear dresses. Like what, ha what happened to masculine men? Men have always dressed a little frilly, right? It was common practice for forever 
for boys to wear dresses until like adolescence and then they'd be put in like pantaloons and whatnot. And even then it's still all like puffy and frilly and colorful. And they had the big wigs and like they dressed up in a lot of stuff that would now be considered very like camp, you know? And that was just what fashion was. And that again is also only in the West. Fashion has looked different in all different parts of the world and has included a whole bunch of different styles and designs and colors and everything. And it's so interesting to me that these people cling on to this like one period of time that they've like idolized for some reason. And are like, this is peak, this is peak masculinity. Like, that was such a small, small moment in time. Like men were wearing high heels and like skirts far longer than they were exclusively wearing suits. And even then that also wasn't everyone. Class has a lot to do with a lot of fashion trends, right? Like lower class people were not typically all dressed up in nice suits. That was something that you did when you had money. <laughs> fashion and class and era, it all plays a part. And I just find it so interesting that these traditionalists go in and they're like 19, 24, rich men. Why aren't we all like that still? I don't know, cause it's not 19, 24, maybe? Regardless of everything, clothing is literally, it's just fabric. It doesn't mean anything. It has no meaning other than like, this looks cool, I'm gonna put it on my body. That's literally it. And like, I doubt you who is making all of these posts are wearing this suit every day. Like you feel like the type of person who goes out wearing like, you know, like a t-shirt, cargo shorts and fucking sandals and are complaining like, why aren't men wearing suits anymore? I don't know, are you wearing suits? I don't think so. I've never seen you before, but I like, I feel like you are like a t-shirts and jeans, cargo shorts kind of guy. So like post outfits of the day and then maybe I'll give you a little bit more credit, but you don't. So I don't believe that you actually follow what you're saying. Practice what you preach, man. Clothing does not have a gender. And you know what else isn't gendered that has weirdly been gendered for a really long time? Skincare. Everyone can and should be looking after their skin with a good skincare regime. And that is where today's video partner comes in, Geology. Geology is a 29 time award winning skin, hair and body care company who make looking after your skin simple. I have partnered with Geology many times and you all know by now how much I love their skincare. It has genuinely like changed the game for me. I am absolutely obsessed with it. How geology works is that you take a skincare survey and you answer some questions and fill out your skin type and it will do some assessing and come up with a skincare regime that is going to work best for you, your goals and your skin type. And it comes with a cleanser that you use both morning and night. And in the morning you follow it with a morning cream with an SPF in it, which is brilliant. You cannot be forgetting your SPF. And at night you have a retinol night cream, which is so nice. This is so velvety smooth. It is genuinely like my favorite thing in the entire world. I absolutely love the way it feels on my skin. And also an eye cream. And I have struggled with acne ever since moving to London. And I was really struggling to find something that would help clear that up. But geology genuinely like changed the game after so long going through so many different products. My skin, my acne has like gone away pretty much completely. It only has like occasional flare ups with like my hormonal cycle. And then like the retinol cream helps with any acne scarring and texture that is left over from my bad breakouts. And I also got a vitamin C and E serum that also helps with that scarring and that texture. And it just leaves your skin so nice and hydrated. And they also do a fantastic hair range with shampoo, conditioner, and co-wash, which exists to help keep the natural oils in your scalp and keep your scalp and your hair nice and healthy. And they're in these cute little pouches, which is great because it means one, you can get all the product out and two they are recyclable so it is better for the planet and they also have a whole range of body washes as well which i am obsessed with these and i love the bottles and the colors and the scents that they have to offer and it is all of course cruelty free and vegan which is fantastic and incredibly important to me when buying 
anything. And they are genuinely like fantastic products that I like swear by. I genuinely am so obsessed and in love with Geology and all of their products and I could not recommend it enough. And if you go to my link in the description or the QR code up on the screen and use my code Kiwi70, you will get 70% off your trial skincare set and an additional 30% off one product additionally to that, whether that be a hair product, a body product, or an extra skin product. And that is such a fantastic deal. That is so much money saved and you will not regret it. Thank you so much Geology for partnering with me for this video and let's get back into it. This is for women with careers and how much they earn. So a barista, I believe that's what she's meant to be, $10 an hour. An OnlyFans person, $30 an hour. A businesswoman, like a CEO type person, $100 an hour. A mother, priceless. The absolute just random numbers put on this. Most people who are like in corporate jobs don't have a salary per hour, for first of all. Um, neither do OnlyFans people. Like that's just not how it works. It's an annual salary. The real cherry on the cake here is being a mother being priceless. Like, yes, that is true. But you're also here saying that that is not something you get paid to do, right? You're not paid to be a mother, which means that you can't afford to like feed your child, house your child, clothe your child, bathe your child. <laughs> like, yes, being a mother is priceless. You can't put a price on being a mother. It is a beautiful and magical and wonderful thing for so many people, not for everyone, but it's something that a lot of people would love to do do love to do, do love to be, and it is not anything that you could put a price on. But that doesn't change the fact that it does in fact cost a lot of money to have a kid. Do you know how much like baby formula costs? Like it's ridiculous. Raising a child is very, very expensive and very difficult to do, which you've pointed out already by being like, why can't you raise kids on one income anymore? Like, yeah, exactly. You can't raise kids on one income anymore. Not really. So as priceless of a job as being a mother may be, it doesn't really pay the bills. It, it just doesn't. If you are in a relationship where a partner can provide for you and you get to be a parent who looks after your child and that is something that you want to do, then that's fantastic. That's fabulous. I love that for you, good for you. However, that is not something a lot of people are able to do as much as they may want to. This whole thing of being like, no one wants to be mothers anymore. No one wants to stay home and look after their kids anymore. That's not true. It's just that people literally can't do that and also, People outside of just mothers should be able to do that. Like fathers should also be able to do that. Like parents in general should be allowed to have that time to stay home and look after their kids. I also love how US centric this is as well in the sense that like I've seen videos about how like you do not get any time off, like any paid time off to be a mother. You have to send like your infants to nursery, which is so, so, so sad. You should be able to get like, I think at least a year of like paid parental leave. And that should be for both parents who are involved in the child raising. Like you should, all parents should be able to have at least a year off to spend with their kids. And I know that there are countries who do that and there are countries who provide even more time than that. And that is fantastic. And that is what we need. And people would take advantage of that if that was an option available to them. However, the US, is a capitalistic hellscape. And they think if they do that, no one's ever gonna work. So they don't do it because capitalism fucking sucks. And capitalism is everywhere, right? It's a capitalistic hellscape everywhere. But there, the, the US is like, like fucked. <laughs> Going to the US and stepping into like that place, I'm always so shocked. I'm like, okay, so I know that like capitalism is bad in the UK and in New Zealand and like everywhere else I've gone. Like it's it's pretty bad. It sucks. Um, and then you go to the US and you're like, this is literally, like this is the worst part of hell. So like if you want more people to be able to raise their children, you have to be able to give them the option to be able to raise their children. And I'm sure, I promise you, people will do that. This is a map of all the McDonald's in the US and then all the churches in Poland. And all the McDonald's in the US, there's there's a lot of them. So it's like 
pretty much just all yellow and then like a few more spread around in like less populated places whereas Poland is like a hundred percent like all churches and I find this so funny because it gives you literally no information other than Poland has a lot of churches and the US has a lot of McDonald's, which we already knew. If you wanted to like make a point here, you would really need to actually show me the comparison of like churches in the US to churches in Poland and McDonald's in the US versus McDonald's in Poland. Because like showing me this, like you're not giving me enough information and you know why? There is a reason for why. In Poland, there are 10,000 churches. And in the US, there are 14,300 McDonald's, which like, wow, that is a huge number of McDonald's. Yeah, it absolutely is. And that is more McDonald's in the US than there are churches in Poland. That is true. But there is also like 30 times more people in the US. That's something to consider. Um, and keeping that in mind, right? Um, like I said, there are 10,000 churches in Poland. There are 380,000 churches in the US. There are 380,000 churches in the US. So uh, show me show me the church map of the US. There isn't one. I couldn't find one. This is the only one that showed up when I Googled it. If you do the maths there, because there are also 500 McDonald's in Poland. What I found out is for every McDonald's in the US, there are 26.5 churches. And then for every McDonald's in Poland, there are 20.2 churches. So there are actually more churches in the US, even by comparison to McDonald's. So you literally made like less of a point. You didn't make any point. You actually proved something wrong. You showed this as though this was like some big drastic, like, oh my God, we've lost religion. We've lost our way. We only care about McDonald's thing. When you literally still have more churches. <laughs> than Poland, which is wild as well, considering a much higher percentage of Poland is actually like practicing Christian and Catholic. So yeah, you good job. Maybe do some fucking research, but obviously everyone just takes it and is like, wow, this is so horrible. We've really lost our way. Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. At least Google something first. Here are four images of rooms full of white people in the 1950s, like, dancing or sitting and having dinner, getting ready in their nice dresses. And it says a world you never knew because it was stolen from you. And I just find it so telling how in literally every single image this person posts, there's not a single person of color ever. Everyone is white constantly. And all of his posts are like, this is my political affiliation. Whatever this is, this is the ideal world. This is what I want. This is what we need. And it's like 1950s, upper middle class, no people of color to be seen. Like that's his ideal world. <laughs> it's just, it really says more than enough. It really, really hammers it home that all he wants is to go back to a time where cis het white men held a hundred percent of the power and could do whatever the fuck they wanted and like owned people and could treat like women and people of color as property and not as people. Like that's what he misses. And although cis het white men still do hold the power. We have obviously come a long way since the 1950s. Whereas like, you know, I'm able to have my own money, my own bank account <laughs> and I can divorce my husband if he hits me, you know? Like that's not something that you used to be able to do. And that is what he is so desperately pining for. A world where segregation was rampant and you could abuse women. The world that was stolen from me that I'll never know, good. I don't want to know it. It changed for a fucking reason. There's a reason society is evolving and growing and changing. And it's because we don't really want to be stuck in a time where Women and people of color are not viewed as people. It's not really how we want to be existing. And us having more doesn't mean you have less. I'm sorry that you hate not having 100% of the power 100% of the time, but like, I don't really care. So get over it. The masculine urge to be left the fuck alone. And it's just like men out in the middle of nowhere, like working in a field, staring at some mountains in a like lake cabin, looking at a castle just by himself in the middle of nature. And sir, fucking go for it. Good riddance, goodbye. Go live by yourself in a fucking lake cabin. I, you will not be missed. Granted, this guy I'm pretty sure has a wife and two kids. Um, 
He doesn't really want to be bothered by them all the time. That's like, a, it's a bit annoying. So he needs to be left the fuck alone and go live his life in the middle of the woods. And I think he should do it. Get off Twitter. Stop earning your six figures a year from this Twitter account. Because you're clearly obviously doing that. Go live in the middle of the woods. Go be left alone. I promise we'll never bother you ever again. Goodbye. Have fun. Modern architecture. You are only a consumer, just a cog in the machine. You are replaceable. You have no past and no future. And it's like big skyscraper buildings that have like funky designs. And then traditional architecture. You belong to a glorious civilization. It's your duty to preserve your heritage. You will inherit your ancestors great work. You must start a family to ensure the future of your nation. And it's like a bunch of like nice, very old, like buildings and churches and things. And I find it so funny because he talks about architecture a lot. He has a lot of posts being like, why are buildings so ugly these days? Why do people even go to college and get degrees in architecture just to make ugly skyscrapers and concrete bridges and shit? And it's like, if you would like to build some like traditional buildings from hundreds, thousands of years ago, whatever, by all means, go ahead. Um, but who's paying for it? Where's it going? This is the thing of like, yeah, they don't build buildings and shit like that anymore because we live in a very fast paced turnover society. No one is willing to put in the millions, now billions of dollars that would be required to build things like that because that takes years and years and years of designing, of building, of, of everything. Like it takes so long and so much labor and it will be years, decades even, before the building is even able to be used. And most like public buildings are built using like tax money and are built using like the government's money, right? They're not gonna fucking pay for that. They just want shit done fast and cheap. They don't give a fuck if it's gonna collapse in five years. They just want it now so they can get as much shit done as possible, as quickly as possible. And so we get left with a bunch of ugly buildings because no one wants to put in the money. I'm sure if you are willing to fund it, there are so many people who would love, they would absolutely love to build something like that. They would love to build things like that, but you're not gonna fucking pay for it. Are you gonna buy the land for it? Are you gonna source all of the resources? Are you going to pay fair wages for the labor of like hundreds or thousands of people over the next several years to build a building that you might not even live to see finished? Is that something you are willing to invest in? Because I don't think it is. Like no one is stopping you from doing that. The reason it doesn't exist now is because of capitalism and because of fast turnover. It's the same reason that we don't have the same like fashion as before in terms of the like big dresses and the like really nice expensive makes of things that people wear every day because fast fashion took over because it makes more money and it's, it's fast fashion. Everything has to be fast. Everything has to turn over quickly. It's all a cog in the machine turning over earning rich people as much money as they fucking possibly can. It's all because of that. That's what it is. That's what it comes down to. If you wanna fund an art project and make a cool building, by all means, go ahead. But I don't think that you are going to. Girls discovering pop stars. I have to learn everything about them. Boys discovering historical figures. I have to learn everything about them. Really? Really? Are we gendering interests now? Is that what this is? We're just making this this generalization? Okay. So first and foremost here, having an interest in celebrities is not exclusively for girls and women. That is something that, you know, anyone can and does have. Like sure, a lot of pop stars are more women are invested in than men, although that is not exclusive. A lot of men are also interested in pop stars. But when it comes to other celebrities like sports and like football and such, a lot of men are very heavily invested in that. And same with obviously women and things as well. Like it's not gender exclusive, but having an interest in celebrities is not exclusive to women. Just as having an interest in historical figures is not exclusive to men. In 2024, presently, there are more historians that are women than are men. It is 60% women to 40% men. History is something that appeals to a lot of women. And believe it or not, a lot of women who are interested in history are also interested in celebrities. Did you know that you can have two interests? Did you know that you aren't limited to only enjoying one thing? <laughs> Did you know that a lot of queer neurodivergent people 
really, really love fandom spaces in terms of celebrity culture and have like special interests when it comes to celebrities such as like k-pop and then are also incredibly incredibly interested in history like the amount of like k-poppies i know who fucking adore history and like greek mythology and stuff is like unreal there is like a, a, a huge amount of crossover between like queer women k-pop and history. Like the amount of like neurodivergent queer women who are both into K-pop and history, that Venn diagram, that is a circle. <laughs> and I just find it again so funny that this guy says all of this shit, but I doubt he knows shit about history. I doubt he has any actual correct information about any history ever. And it is all just his whitewashed American forefathers bullshit that he refuses to take any criticism on and actually learn from. But you know, I am making assumptions here. So, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not. No amount of one night stands can replace the fulfillment of marrying a great woman and building a beautiful future together as a team. I mean, no one's really using one night stands to replace marriage. Like that's not the point. And the thing is, is that you can have both. You can have one night stands and a bunch of casual relationships and then also get married later on, or you can do both at the same time if you have an open relationship, or sometimes a one night stand will turn into a marriage. You you don't fucking know. Like no one is using one night stands to replace a relationship. It's just a different type of relationship. So you're just kind of going about this all wrong. If I'm going out and having casual sex, I'm not out there being like pining, looking for marriage and being upset that I'm not married. It's because I don't really want to be doing that right now. I just kind of want to be having fun. That's sort of that, you know, it's not the same thing. They're not placing each other. And one final one, um, because he posts a lot of these and I mentioned it before, and that's just my political affiliation is whatever this is. And it's just a bunch of white people in church or having family dinners. Like that's it. He's like, this is my political affiliation. That's not a political affiliation, bro. That's just, you want a family. That's not political. That's just, you want a family. The problem comes in when you're like, my political affiliation is that I want every single person in the world to live by my standards of what I think living is. And that is everyone being white and cisgender and heterosexual and having a bunch of babies and having money. That is how the world has to be. Every single, like that, that's some dangerous thinking. Uh, if you, all you want in life is for every single person to look and be exactly like you, I think there's a word for that. Yeah, let people, let people live. Like if you wanna have a traditional family, then fucking have a traditional family. No one is stopping you, get over it. Live your life and let other people live their lives. Like go away. I don't care what you do as long as you leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> That's really it at the end of the day. Do what you want, just leave me out of it. Anyway, I am going to leave this here. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. I am here twice a week and I would love to see you again soon. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. I appreciate you greatly. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Ikazel, Jessica, Aldo, Danielle, Raven, Elias, Chris, and Amelia. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If anyone else would like to be on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Savvy Cat. I'll click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. <laughs>